Presenting the world's greatest mysteries. And now, your host. This is Basil Rathbone. Suspense, mystery, and sinister doings are all part of the story we have for you today. This is one of those stories which makes the news, the headlines. Often a news item may in the beginning give nothing more than a faint clue to the mystery which surrounds it, but it's that mystery, when found, that makes exciting reading. If you were a newspaper man stationed in Paris with the whole of Europe in which to find news to fill your paper, where would you start looking? Well, a man in this position is a reporter with a roving commission to wander at will through the highways and the byways of the European continent. From all sources, where languages intermingle and sometimes uh, nationalities clash, come the lead to those items you find on the front page of your daily paper. Yes, these stories make the news and they are found where the news is made. Presenting Europe Confidential. I've heard rumors of you. Wanted in the States, aren't you? Well, how did that get around? I heard it. Yeah. You've been in some big deals. All right, that covers my references. What about yours? <laughs> You're a very cool one, amigo. You don't think much of your life, do you? <laughs> In a moment, we'll bring you Lionel Merton as Mike Canoy, the Paris correspondent of a famous American newspaper, in another exciting story in our series, Europe Confidential. This is Mike Canoy. Did I ever tell you about the day I took a ribbing from the boys on the paper when I landed in Paris carrying a bunch of violets? It was March 1946, and it started in Marseille. I was there to get a story about a flourishing black market and the man behind it. I landed from Paris around 2.30 in the afternoon to be met by a member of our staff who'd arranged hotel reservations and other details. There you are, Mike. A single room at the Plaza Hotel under the name of Mike Maloof. So why you want to stay in that end of town? Well, for the same reason that I'm using an alias, Toby. We got wind of this black market in Paris. When the chief decided I was to handle it, we started sending the word around about a big-time American racketeer named Mike Maloof. Maybe it'll pay off, maybe not, but, well, that's how I hope to get into the black market. Seems like a risk you're taking. Well, stop worrying for me, Toby. Thanks for the hotel booking. I'll be in touch. So, for the sake of a story, I became Mike Maloof, American racketeer, occupying a hotel room in the seamy part of Marseille. For the sake of a story, I had to adopt a new identity and use the information we'd carefully built up in Paris from reports that had filtered through. I spent the night at the plaza, and early the next morning I was surveying the square outside my hotel when I was detected for a tourist and given a special kind of welcome. Violets, sweet violets, kind gentlemen. Spend a few pence for the good of your soul and a breath of English countryside. Well, it would take more than your violets to sweeten my soul, Mother. And tell me, what do you know about the English countryside? I was born in England, that's what. And if I choose to warm me old bones in a warmer climate, that's me own business, kind sir. <laughs> You're a prickly old puss, aren't you? 
And just for such courage with a possible customer, I'll purchase a bunch of your dilapidated blossoms. Oh, thank you, sir. I knew you were a proper gentleman the moment I laid eyes on you, I think. I might also uh, buy a little information. What kind of information? You wouldn't happen to be acquainted with a certain pirate by the name of the Spaniard. The Spaniard? You ever heard of him? You'd remember the man. A scar like a gaping wound across his face. And instead of a left hand, he flourishes a wicked iron hook, I'm oh, told. Oh, I know the Spaniard, though I pray to forget such as him. What would you want with him, gentlemen? Words, mother, just a few simple words. Would you be his friend? Well, neither friend nor foe. I never met him. Hmm, it's foe you'll be. He makes no friends. I'd like to meet him. Hmm, it's your loss. You can find him at Crow's Nest, a Salem and Saloon and Lodging, down the next street and one over. You can't miss it. Just follow your nose and the noise. It was like walking into a page of Robert Louis Stevenson. Ship's lanterns lighted the place, fishing nets and cobwebs decorated the walls, and I swear that some of the patrons boasted barnacles. But at the bar, with a swearing green parrot on his shoulder, was the English renegade they called the Spaniard, complete with scar and iron hook. Well done, gentlemen, well done. But shouldn't the song have been 15 men on a dead man's chest, yo-ho-ho, and the rest of it? Uh, and who's that bright boy? Uh, perhaps he comes yeah. to slum. Behold, he brings flowers. <laughs> Let's <laughs> heave him out. Yeah, Come on, get him. him. Hold on, Come mate. On. Oh, There'll be no even overboard of a man who comes to crow's nest with posies. <laughs> Yeah. He's either a maniac or a fox. And this one's no madman. Oh, greetings from Reynard, Spaniard. Ah. Reynard, is it? I've read me fables, matey. What's a fox's other name? Mike Maloof. Maloof. I know that one, too. Oh, your fame is also known to me. Judging by them dead violets, by way of gentle Annie. Oh, is that her name? <laughs> She's been called other things. <laughs> yeah, she told me where you dropped anchor. <laughs> the most important facts concerning you I had before arriving in port. Well, maybe we'd better have a private suit, Mr. Maloof. I'm at your disposal. Follow me. Run in a bucket of grog for me and my friend, Robbie. Oh, the double Spaniard. Welcome aboard, Mr. Mello. We've got some talking to do. At last I was getting somewhere. Sharing a bucket of grog with the Spaniard was a privilege reserved for very few. State your business, Mr. Mello. I've come to Marseille to work. There are those who say you run a black market here. Who told you that? I never betray sources of information. Huh. Ah, you're a cool one. I've heard rumors of you. You're wanted in the States, aren't you? Well, how did that get around? I heard it. You've been in some big deals. All right. That covers my references. Now, what about yours? Huh. Uh, you're a very cool one, amigo. You don't think much of your not, do you? On the contrary... I think pretty well of all my lives. Lives? Yeah, as of a cat. I have more than one. I realize that I wouldn't be the first victim to feel your hook in my throat, Spaniard, but uh, this I guarantee I'd be the last. You've got the goal to threaten me? No, merely stating a fact. I'm not altogether alone in Marseille. You know, I have very powerful associates who could even reach you. You're a liar. Try me. Well, maybe we can make a deal, matey. My business is expanding. I could use a sharper like you. Now you're beginning to sound more intelligent. <laughs> you don't like me any more than I like you, Mr. Maloof. It's a fine start. We should do ourselves some good. Ourselves? No one else? Hey. All right. 
Meet me tonight over in the south bank of Old Harbour. There's no warehouse. Last one on a dock. Abandoned, they say. <laughs> but you say differently. Come and see for yourself, Mr. Willow. Eleven o'clock. Six bells it is, my friend. Ah, maybe we got more in common than I thought. Have another slug of grog, matey. <laughs> I begged off and left the Spaniard swilling his bucket of grog. I left Old Town and walked to one of the better hotels in Marseille to dine alone. I was enjoying an after-dinner liqueur when something new and uniformed was added. Am I addressing Monsieur Mike Malouf? Why, yes. I'm Inspector Delarge, police. Let me speak very plainly. We have trouble enough here without importing it from America. I advise you to make your stay as brief as possible, monsieur, and to cause no incident while you are here. Au revoir. Fog lay in my throat like cold cotton when I arrived at the abandoned warehouse on the waterfront of Old Harbor. Backwater lapped against the pilings of the dock and the damp crept into my bones. The whole atmosphere of the place was one of defeat, despair, and hopelessness. I was anxious to get my business over with, and I pushed open a sagging door. Hello. Anybody there? Mike Malouf. Why, yes, uh, I was to meet the... Mm. He didn't have a thing on him, Spaniard. Not even a knife. Oh, fool him. Look to it, Robbie. He's waiting in that. So, you've come back to us, Mr. Malou. My congratulations, Spaniard. I... For not dropping me into the sea after your cabin boy here slugged me. That would have been far too easy. Easy? Yeah. I want to see you squirm a bit before sinking you. You didn't think I'd let you walk in nice as you please and take over my hard-earned living, did you? <laughs> Certainly. I still intend to, Spaniard. Uh, listen to him, Robbie. Oh, he's a comedian, he is. <laughs> but Inspector Delarge takes an even more humorous view of the situation. Did you say, Delarge? That's why he came here so bold. He's got protection. Well done, Robbie. You should have told me that sooner, Mr. Malou. Well, I found it most unwise to publicize one's affiliations. Keeping too quiet might lose you your life. Well, does that mean I still go for a midnight swim? No. No, I'll saw you on, Mr. Malou. But it's going to take more than your fancy talk or Inspector Delage. How do you mean? Well, they're clamping down on me. I'm afraid to sell. You find a safe way of making customer contact, amigo. And you're in. Can't your corrupt inspector assist you? Oh. So you know that, do you? Well, of course. I don't trust them Spaniards. Shut up. Stay out of this. You're in a one condition, my love. Sell my goods for me and you share. But if you fail... Then you'll feel the cow steel of my oak against your throat. Nice guy, this Spaniard. But at least I was in. And already, by chance, I'd uncovered one corrupt police inspector who was a part of Operation Black Market. The next stage was to get enough evidence to break the story. In the short space of 24 hours, I knew that the Spaniard headed the black market organization and that Inspector Delage, for one, was on his payroll. But knowing it wasn't enough, I had to prove it. So I had to take the game one stage further and do some mild trading on behalf of the Spaniard. But to do that, I had to make it convincing. Violet, sweet Violet. <laughs> we'll spend a few pence for the good of their soul and the... Oh, it's you, young gentleman. Good morning, Annie. Did you find the Spaniard? Yes. 
Say, isn't it a bit cold for you to be out today? Oh, my diggings are no better. What with me gas turned off and me landlady wanted to lock me out if I don't pay me pass for rent. Look, supposing I buy out your stock and we go over to that inn for something warm, huh? <laughs> what, you, you go into an inn with the likes of me? Oh, it'd be an honor. Come along, madame. <laughs> Ah, oh, there's nothing like a spot of tea and brandy to put life in a body again. You want another cup, Annie? Oh, Lord love you, sir. I've had three already. Oh, well, well, maybe I'd best have one more. <laughs> That's my girl. I'll brew the potion myself, <laughs> huh? Well, I never thought that gentle Annie would see the likes of this again. I see I'll have to take you in hand, Annie. How do you mean, sir? Oh, Maybe I've taken a fancy to you. To me? Go on with <laughs> you. Or perhaps I've got nothing better to do at the moment. Oh, that sounds more natural. Well, how's this for a starter? I'll bring you flowers from the wholesale market, the best and freshest blooms I can find, and they won't cost you a penny. How about that? You, you do this for me? If you'll do something for me, Mum. Oh, anything, Mr. Maloof, Anything. You're going to have the briskest floral trade in Marseille, and whoever asks you for violets, sweet violets, remember this? Violets, sweet violets. Well, why, yeah. sir, that, that's my own song. Yes, but they must say those exact words when they make a purchase, oh, see? Yeah. Now, when they do, you give them my address. I'm staying at the plaza. The plaza, yes. Now, there'll be some who'll give you envelopes. These I'll collect every evening. To have business with such folk? Just follow my instructions, Mother, and you'll make us both very happy. Oh, that I will. And now, how about another spot of tea, huh? I've never heard a like, Mr. Murrow. The old thing's a rum idea. But you can't disagree with its efficiency, Spaniard. Gentle Annie will siphon the contacts. They either come to me at the plaza or they leave their dough in the envelopes for the larger merchandise. Best of all, no one will suspect. Annie has sold her wares in that square for years. Huh. Buying flowers to sell black water. What's this business coming to? Oh, things are tough the world over. The only thing that makes me out to, amigo, is that it's your neck. Remember that. I remember and I accept the responsibility. We'll try it for a month. No longer. Less. I guarantee profitable results within the week. And you won't forget my share, will you, partner? Don't you worry about me, amigo. We're signing together. But one shift in course from you. And my oak will do its work. <laughs> now my timbers are shaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. How about another bucket of grog with me, Mr. Merlo? Not tonight, Spaniard. Remember, I have to be up with the birds to buy violets while the dew is still fresh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. My plan was simply this, to do some minor trading, enough to get evidence. And if it had been given a chance, it might possibly have worked. But there were other forces at work, and my scheme fell down that night with a damp thud. At dusk, as arranged, I went to meet Annie in the square, knowing that certain petty criminals had been sent to trade with her during the day. Not enough to matter, but enough to convince the Spaniard. So I went to pick up the envelopes, unsuspecting, unprepared. Good evening, Annie. You got some sweet violets for me? Sir, Mr. Maloof, look out. Mr. Maloof? Well, Inspector Delage, facing the other way, reading a newspaper. You know, I should have got to know the back of your head more thoroughly. You won't try to make any move, please, Maloof. I have gendarme around the square. Oh? Huh? For black market activities, I hereby place you under arrest. To say the situation was loaded was something of an understatement. Two hours later, I was in front of the prefect of police with Inspector Delarge giving a highly colorful and fictitious story of my activities. That is the position, mon père. I've had this man under watch since he arrived. He is a dangerous American with a criminal record. Have you anything to say, Monsieur Malou? Plenty. What is there to say? Do you deny you are trading in illegal goods and using the woman flower seller as your agent? Well, I... Do you deny it? No, but... Then what else is there to say? 
He admits it, mon préfet. Let us hear him, Inspector Delage. All right, mon préfet. I didn't want to do it this way, but there's not much choice now. My name isn't Maloof. It's Mike Canoy. I'm an American newspaper man from Paris. Lies. You know yourself we have a file on the activities of this Maloof. That is true, Inspector. But it should not be difficult to prove his identity. Give me a few hours and I can do just that. Very well. I concede he may be a newspaper man. But aren't we getting away from the point? Whatever he is, he was trading in the black market. <laughs> a newspaper man. Hello. They have been corrupt newspaper men before. And corrupt policemen, Inspector Delarge. That is always the last resort, monsieur. Mon préfet, we have a case against him. And there is a witness. Yes. Bring in the witness. Certainly. Monsieur, come in. Robbie. You see, the witness is known to this man. Andrew Robinson. Is that the name? Certainly is, sir. This is the man. You have charges to make against Monsieur Malou? Aye. This is the man who comes to the crow's nest and tries to talk my friend the Spaniard into a black market deal. I heard it all with my own ears. Well, monsieur. This man works for the Spaniard, and he and Inspector Delarge dreamed this up between them. Oh, come. That goes too far. Too far? I'll go further. Delarge is in this black market in town right up to his neck, and I can prove it. They manage an idiot. This is a pack of lies. Wait a minute. An accusation against one of my police is a serious matter. How can you substantiate it? By bringing you the Spaniard. He's now, wait crazy. a minute. You see, they don't like that. Look, Monsieur Le Préfet, I came to Marseille under this guise to try and get into the black market. All right. So it was working against the police, but I was after a story. So we won't debate the merits of what I did. Get on with you. I met the Spaniard and I put a deal to him. He accepted me because he thought I was under Inspector Delage's protection. So I started to do some small trading through Annie just to make my role look genuine. Are you going to listen to any more of this? Wait, Delarge. I talked the Spaniard into it, but not his henchman, Robbie, and not apparently Inspector Delarge. Together, they plotted to frame me like this, and when I bring in the Spaniard, I think I can prove that. How? The Spaniard is a man who doesn't like his orders countermanded. If I were to bring him here, we might learn a great deal. There is one point, monsieur. For months, my men have been trying to find this man they call the Spaniard. How can you find him if a full-scale investigation has failed? I found him before, didn't I? Who was in charge of that investigation? Inspector Delarge. <laughs> okay, mon préfet. I'll bring your boy in within a few hours. Maybe that'll prove for a start that Inspector Delarge's inquiries weren't so thorough after all. For a while, he demurred and then finally agreed. And I went after the Spaniard. He wasn't at the crow's nest, but I finally found him in the warehouse. I entered very carefully this time. Oh, it's you, is it, my snooping amigo? The newspaper man! Get your news fast, Spaniard. Not this time. They were fools. I'm getting out. As soon as I play you, I'm... It's you or me, amigo. I always knew it would be. And my yoke will get you. Not this time, Spaniard. Come on, get up. You've got a date with me at police headquarters. It took us a few hours, but the truth finally came out. I was cleared. Inspector Delarge was indicted with the Spaniard and the rest of the crew. Oh, yes, it all tidied up very nicely. And two days later, I was on my way back to Paris. But at the airport, before I left, there was one solitary well-wisher to see me off. Mr. Connor, sir. Annie! Oh, I couldn't let you go without a word of goodbye, sir. Well, now, that's very kind of you, Annie. You came all this way just to see me off? Yes, and to give you these. Au revoir, Mr. Connor. And all the best from Annie. <laughs> She was lost in the crowd, and I was on my way to the plane, deeply touched, I might say. I carried my small present up the gangway and down it again when we reached our destination. Well, what could I do? It was a gift. That's how I came to fly from Marseille to Paris, carrying a bunch of violets.
You have been listening to Lionel Merton as Mike Canoy in another exciting episode in the series, Europe Confidential. This is Basil Rathbone again. Well, that's a story that's hit the headlines, and that's the way it's found. From his office in Paris, Mike has set out many times to track down those little fragments of news which uh, build into a headline article. Indeed, our roving reporter friend has many a tale to tell. I hope you'll join me for the next one. Well, goodbye till then. Till we meet again and listen to another of the world's greatest mysteries. <laughs> <laughs>